In this example, we're going to introduce some 3D concepts using a polar array so that we can make this geometry on the left look like the finished example we see here on the right. Well, let's notice a few things before we start. This is actually an array that has 10 elements rotated around a circular center, and you notice that there is a second, what is now going to be called a row of objects that are equally offset from the first polar array. You'll also notice that the second row of objects are inset down into the base of the fountain here, and that's going to denote some sort of behavior along the z-axis, which we see over here in our UCS. So let's see how this all works. The first thing we've done is select the polar array command. We'll now select this object, finalize our selection, and then pick the center point for the rotation of the array. Now we see that the initial results, having six objects spaced around, come up by default. So we'll make a trip up here to the ribbon tab, and we'll override this so that we can get our 10 items like we're trying to emulate. Now what we want to do now is we want to get the second row of objects placed out here by going to two rows and then giving a spacing distance, 250 units, between the first and the second row. Now we can see that previewing down here. Now to take care of the Z, what we want to do is sneak down here and use this increment. What this does is it gives us an incremental elevation so that the second row can be moved downward in the Z direction, and we'll go ahead and give it a measurement here, minus 20 units. And you can see that the objects now push their way down in. So it's now very easy for us to create uh, a very complex associative array that can be re-edited at any time. And that introduces some important concepts of rows and row offsetting so that we can start controlling 3D behavior along the Z-axis.